Welcome back to Elsinore. Last episode, we finally managed to read the notes that were hidden in Polonius's chamber, thanks to the help of Gertrude, who then pushed our father into the fire and they burned to death. Uh, yeah, anyway, now, <laughs> now we know more about what old King Hamlet went through. Similar experience to us being stuck in time and all that. Although we already knew that part, but now at least we know about the Hand of Dionysus, which is the book that we need to find, the seemingly cursed book that was last seen being carried to Elsinore by Lady Simona. So we can meet Lady Simona on the morning of Sunday, the very last day. They should come to the tavern and then we can ask them about it. But first, since it's not Sunday, let's just ask everybody everybody that we can about the book. Hamlet's the closest, I think. Well, not anymore. Are they all busy? No, we're good. I wonder if I can even ask the question to most of these people. Most of them probably wouldn't know anything about it. It is in the list, right? Ah, here's the piece of hearsay for it. The King's Cursed Book. Can't Speak with Brit about it, though. Um, <laughs> Quince. I'm sure we can mention it to Quince. Hello. We can't even see them. <laughs> about this cursed book. Yes. Oh dear, yes. That book is the source of all sorrow, all chaos. Huh. I had it under my control once, but it's been lost. And so your fate and mine are tied, as well as that miserable spirits. So you know of it? And you never told me? Would you have believed me? No. Now then. If you find it, bring it to me immediately, lest it cause any more pain and loss. As you've now realized, it's far too dangerous to occupy human hands. I have every intention of destroying it immediately, as someone ought to have done long ago. You haven't attended my little play about this very matter, have you? <laughs> to why I must say it is truly my magnum opus if I do say so myself. Castletown, Thursday morning. You'll be my guest of honor. Hmm. That's before he's come to Elsinore. All right, I'll find him then. Quince will now perform on Thursday mornings. Is that the first day? Yeah, the first day. Thursday mornings. Obviously on the next loop, of course. Everybody's grouped in the courtyard. Horatio. Mm. Nothing. Not surprisingly. Ladies, stop! be surprised if I could mention it to them. Nah, I can. Which means I'm sure I can mention it to Lady Gildan's turn. Everybody else is in here. Bernardo? No. Can't talk with Gertrude. Ah, I can talk with Hamlet about the King's Cursed Book. I've learned that your father may have come across a strange book. Do you know anything about it? He loved reading. Do you expect I tracked every tome in his library? No, it wasn't a book he owned. It was something he was searching for. Something special. What might it look like? I have no idea. Hmm. Then what can you expect from me? Of course I don't know how to find something with no description. Yeah, fair talk to Claudius about it. My king. Your brother was apparently searching for a strange old book before his death. Do you know anything about it? No. Not in the slightest. What sort of a book? My brother always was the learned sort. Myself, I'm partial to the sword. Hmm. I'm not certain what it might look like, but he was obsessed with finding it. Did he ever do anything strange to that extent? I see. 
Yes, there was something like that. In the days leading up to his death, he spent every waking moment in the gallery, poring over every page he could find. It was as though he was consumed by something. Anytime I spoke to him, it was as though he couldn't see me, or he seemed frustrated that I disrupted him. I'd encourage you to have a look through the collection, but many of those books are a bit too stimulating for a young woman's mind. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Farewell. Mind your health first. I want to push you into the fire, you fuck. Hmm. Tried, 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 tried. Have a tried Othello. Or Gertrude, because I can't speak with them. What is Gertrude doing in Claudius's chamber? There's an event. Hmm. Where is it? It must be here. Are they looking for the poison? Perhaps inside his desk? No, it isn't here either. I'm certain he took it. But why? I wonder what she's looking for. Quite the information, Gertrude's searching for something. Is that a lead now? Or a hearsay, I mean? Or actually, is it a lead? Hmm. No, it's not. But it's probably hearsay. Yeah, here it is. I spotted the queen going through the king's private possessions. Maybe I should speak to Hamlet about that. Uh, yeah, anybody else to ask? Othello, yes. I want to ask them about the book. I think that's it. Let's go to Othello. Othello's a fine fellow. Mm-hmm, know about your card game. Get fucked. Cygnus. Oh, we can't. Nope. Okay, in that case, let's go speak with Hamlet about Gertrude searching for something. And also, I want to go to the gallery, look for that book. Hamlet. Your mother was searching through your uncle's belongings. Do you know what she might have been looking for? Hmm. Proof, perhaps. Of what? <laughs> of something larger than either of us. But I doubt her loyalties, and I doubt my assessment of those loyalties. So I shall not speak to her of it. Lest I be revealed. Hmm. I probably should just speak to Gertrude directly about it. Which... Oh, actually, I can... No, they're still shattered, right? I can't fuck with them. Ah, oh, they went back in their chambers. An event just happened here. Gertrude despairs and somebody died. Did Gertrude kill herself? Polonius is dead. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Well, there's nothing in particular I want to do from here. I, I can't seem to find whatever I'm looking for in the gallery, so I'm thinking maybe I should just wait here. Just hang out in the gallery and see what happens. I'm very suspicious about the assorted papers here. Because out of the clickable things, there's only four clickable bookshelf type things. This one, which is for the death certificate. These, which are for the peculiar tales, all of those, all of these three give you something to read. And then there's this one, Assorted Papers, which doesn't give you anything, just says another old dusty bookshelf. I'm very, very suspicious of this. But, I mean, there's nothing I can do with it right now. Anyway, it's about midnight, so let's get to the wall. Speak with a ghost about the book. Hello. You are free of your assassin. Yes, still am. Mm, the King's Cursed Book. A book? I found your notes. They mentioned you were looking for a cursed book. You were trapped, weren't you? Just like I am now. I can feel the cobwebs of my memory being dusted away gently. Oh, to be alive, to remember, 
my utter failure. That book. I gave up in the end, didn't I? And I let that cursed thing win, break me down. You mean the book? Please. I know it's confusing, but start at the beginning if you can. What happened? Yes. Like you, I was doomed to repeat the occasion of my death. Hundreds of times. Thousands. And like you, the timeline of my death was no more than a week. My son Hamlet was away at Wittenberg, my brother Claudius plotting to take my throne. How long was I trapped in that insane void between life and death? Centuries? Millennia? I know not. It was peaceful to forget for a while, but even now, I cannot be truly dead. No, here I am, still animated, grimacing, like a starved dog brought back to life, forced to bare my teeth. Usurper. I cannot truly rest until my brother pays for his crime, the crime I spent a thousand years trying to avoid. Why were you looking for the book? What did you expect to find? A way out. A choice between versions of a private hell. But I was not permitted that much. No, I had to give up. I lay there in the garden, being poisoned by my own brother over and over again for years before I was freed. I scoured every inch of the castle, every nook and flagstone and drawer. It isn't here, Ophelia. It simply isn't. Why did I have to give up? To expire into madness alone? Please. Find the book. Find the book and save your own soul. Simona. I know about Simona. I know she hid it intentionally. Took it with her. You know that name? How? How can you know? I'm going to put you to rest, King Hamlet. I've decided. I can change it. I'll find her and get the book from her. I'll end this for both of us. I swear. Live on. It is eternally more worthwhile to fight than to give up as I did, Ophelia. Never forget that. For you, hope lingers. I believe that you will live to see winter come to Denmark, putting an end to this cursed summer. So much is writing on me now. I've got to find a way to get that damned book. Passing lots of time, it is now Sunday. Waiting for Simona to appear. They should appear sometime in the morning. Oh! No, that's not them. Wait. Wait. How? The, fo the foreign soldiers come this early? How did I manage to speak to Simona that one time? How do you delay them? Do you have to... Maybe that's what they meant when they said that um, maybe it slows them down if we arrest Fortinbras and then they escape? Maybe slow them down just means literally slow them down by like some hours. So maybe I need to do that. It's time. At the start of a new loop. Um, I told Polonius uh, about Fortinbras' hideout, so they should get arrested. Hopefully delay them by a few hours so we can talk to Lady Simona on Sunday, I hope. In the meantime, since this is the very beginning, Quince said that they would put on a play about my very problem in the Castletown streets, I believe. Yes, is it listed in the timeline? Hmm. No, it's not. But it should happen. Kiki. Ladies there we go. Gentlemen. Gather around, ladies and gentlemen, spirits and sprites. 
Welcome to the performance at the edge of the world. I call this script... The Mirthful Merchant. Once there was a strange little man who collected and sold strange little trinkets. Of course, the toys weren't strange to him, for every strange thing is beloved unto someone else. And the merchant made it his life's endeavor to find an owner who'd love every odd thing he ever found. Ah. He traveled the wide world, handing out his wares, painted wooden shoes for the legless man, an ugly little doll for the bereaved mother. He gave sugar to the gumless old women and wooden teeth to the prettiest village girls. Every man, woman, and child who received a gift had to laugh in a lopsided, crooked way. <laughs> For they had been given the gift most incompatible with them, and that brought them a perverse joy. But all this time, within him gnawed an incurable loneliness, a hatred of himself so deep and so dark he could scarcely tell day from night. He moved through the world in a fog, handing out his gifts, collecting some others here and there, bearing a solemn wish of his own. The wish to die. <sighs> Yes, this merchant had never felt any semblance of happiness, no matter how grateful the recipients of his gifts might be. Then one night, he lay himself down on the shore of a foreign beach, and he lay there until the night was dark and silent. The tide came up and washed over his face. Even still, he did not move. The tide grew powerful and swept his bag of trinkets out to sea, but still he did not move. And as the waves carried him out to sea again, he lay still, and he sank down and down and down into the depths. He felt his soul rise like the last lingering air bubble, shifting and squirming in the muck of the ocean floor. At the bottom of the black waters, he heard a voice, and it sang to him. It was the voice of God, or perhaps all the gods who had ever been and would ever be. And this Almighty bore the merchant back in his arms, back to shore, back to the sand, and he left the merchant sleeping on the shore. When the merchant awoke, he found the sack of trinkets sitting beside him on the sand, but it was empty. Ah. No, he realized, not empty. There was one item in the bottom, a trinket just for him, a special life-giving object filled him with utter glee. Yes, turning this object in his hands, he knew for certain the gods had given it to him, and that he could no more throw it away than part with his own beating heart. For this trinket was utterly incompatible with him in every way. It bestowed eternal life, and it whispered to him that he must write stories, marvelous stories. Each of these stories would take on a life of its own. In this way, he was not just condemned to live forever, no, he must create life. For all stories are worlds, and there can be no worlds truly without life. Yes. The merchant took to the road, and he traveled all around the world, telling stories and creating life. A century passed, then another. And as the years passed, he grew stronger. His mastery only increased. What a treat, this infinite gift. What a joy! For he so loved bringing together the story threads in pleasing ways, and over the years he'd become quite talented at it, dare he say. Uh. Okay, they're talking about themselves. <laughs> but then, one day, his prized trinket was stolen from him. Ah, by Simona. Brutally taken and hidden, he searched the land far and wide, but even after many decades passed, he found nothing at all. And so, unable to move on, he languished. He could no longer create beautiful stories. His master's tool had been taken away. Meanwhile, the ripples of his lost trinket were felt by all those around him. He felt its gift upon them, the gift of eternal life. But to them, it was no gift at all. It was a terrible curse. That is the end of our tale. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. There's no one else watching. Quince? I don't understand. 
What does all this mean? I wish I could tell you. I don't even know myself. Let us merely say that we are odd friends under unfortunate circumstances, you and I. I must apologize for the situation you find yourself in now. I certainly never intended this outcome. But, well, here you are. And until my trinket returns, it can't be helped. Good day. Let me think a moment. Quince is stuck in time, just like me. But I knew that already. He's looking for something. Some kind of object. A trinket. And he's trapped, like me, until he can find it. He must be talking about the book my mother mentioned in her testament. I need to find and meet Simona. If I can accomplish that, maybe I can make headway. We now believe that Quince experiences time loops. Learn more about the Hand of Dionysus and more about the Playmaster. Let's look at those. Lady Simone is last seen with the Book of Fates, and I know something King Hamlet did not. She's still alive. Uh, wait, no, I don't think that's new. This is the new part. It seems clear this is the same book Quince had stolen from him long ago. If I can find it, then Quince might be able to offer some guidance on what to do with it next. And about the Playmaster... Quince performed a little sideshow in town, and it was odd, to say the least. If his story is to be believed, he's not only immortal, but some great godlike tool of his has been stolen from him. He's here in Elsinore to try and find it. Okay, well, I think I'm just going to hang out in the Flintian Steel now that Prince Fortinbras is going to be arrested, and hopefully we'll meet Simona. I'd also like to talk to... Gertrude about what they were searching for before they die. My lady, I saw you looking through the king's personal belongings. I know. You... you did? What were you doing, if you don't mind my asking? I do mind, in fact. It was something very personal, Ophelia. Something I'd like my husband and I to keep between us. But rest assured, it was no threat to anyone. Not even to him. Hmm. I guess the nuclear option is to just tell King Claudius? I don't know, let's try that. <laughs> ah, no, they're busy. I saw the queen rummaging through your things. Gertrude? You saw my wife? You're certain? As the day is long, my lord. Hmm. How odd. I inquired with my wife directly, assuming she would naturally have been in my chambers. And yet, she denied it. I'll have Bernardo speak to her privately. This is disconcerting. Is that an event? Hell yeah! Oh. Whoa, King Claudius now believes that Queen Gertrude is the spy? Oh, I wasn't even thinking that. Holy shit. That could have some interesting results. When's the meeting taking place? In just a minute. My lady. I hate to trouble you, but I've been informed of some troublesome news. It bears investigation, however unbelievable it may be. What? What do you mean? My husband's investigating me. Whatever for? He's concerned about some recent behavior of yours. I'll stop short of naming any further accusations aloud. Oh. I see. Ophelia saw my rummaging and came right to you about it. Is that it? So, you admit to it? I do. But not for the reasons you might think. Please. Can you keep a secret? Uh, uh, it depends, my lady, on what that secret might be. Mm. My late husband gave me a very special gift. 
I think my darling Claudius is hiding it from me. A certain amulet of mine. It was near and dear to me, and incredibly special. Hamlet wore it into battle. It was a present for him. It came with me when I arrived from my father's lands as a girl. He wore it when we were wed, and when he was to be buried, I draped it around his neck. But then, at the funeral, it was gone. Claudius. I know for certain Claudius took it, and I thought perhaps I could find it, but I'm sure he's absconded with it. Dropped it into the ocean, melted it down, buried it deep and far away as he does with all things painful. And I don't think I shall ever find it again. I had no idea. My lady, I apologize for the intrusion. Mm. This is a hole I must fill alone. Thank you for your understanding, Bernardo. My lady. How terrible. That is terrible. God. I feel so bad for Gertrude. And they absolutely know that it was me who told on them, so... They probably don't like me very much right now. Doesn't seem to have stopped anything, though. Like, I can still talk with them. But they surely hate me. Well, I can't seem to mention that Gertrude is searching for something. Again. It didn't, it didn't give me an event or anything by listening to Gertrude talk with Bernardo, which surprises me. I don't know how to follow up on it now. I am kind of curious to tell the king that I know about their poison cache. Let's just try it. Uh, 